everyone, so long time no see. Um, I took quite a bit of a break from filming for the second half of 2019, which isn't unusual for me, but is just how it turned out. But at the moment, I, as you can see, I am bringing you a video that I have been preparing for the entirety of 2019. As you can tell from the title, this is every beauty product that I finished in 2019. So a little bit of backstory, in 2019 I decided to go on a no-buy, um, which meant that I wasn't purchasing anything that I wasn't replacing or that hadn't broken throughout 2019, that included books. Uh, homewares, clothing, and makeup and skincare. So uh, if you want more information about how that went, I can do a blog post or something about it, but just know that for all of 2019, I didn't purchase any hair care, skincare, body care, makeup, or any of the like um, that wasn't a replacement for something I had completely run out of. So that meant that I spent the year using up a lot of products. So before we get into this, um, I am going to do this all in one video to save myself some time, uh, but I will put timestamps in the description if there is a category in particular you're interested in knowing about. So I'll do it in makeup, perfume, uh, skincare and body care, and then hair care at the end, and any miscellaneous categories as well. Um, I'm also going to let you know how much this all came to. So I kept track of uh, every month what I finished and how much I paid for it or how much it would be worth if I were to purchase it. And this total for 2019, I used up $3,568.21 worth of product. So that's approximately how much uh, all of this in front of you would cost to repurchase or how much I paid to purchase it. So I think that's all I need for a preamble and I'll just jump straight into my makeup products. Okay, so with the first category I've got here is all of the makeup products that I finished in 2019. I've got them kind of grouped, so I'll just go through and let you know what's in them and, you know, some details. So first on this far side here, I've got two Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Pencils, one in Pillow Talk and the other one was Pink Venus, I think, and I finished both of those in 2019 so they are completely done. I was really glad to get through those in Project Pans. I also finished one lipstick. This was the Revlon Ultra HD lipstick in the shade Tulip and I completely finished that. I really would have preferred to finish more lipsticks in 2019 but I did what I could. I then finished three concealers. So the first is the Glossier Stretch Concealer in the shade Light. 10. I really really liked this concealer a lot and would consider purchasing it again. The other concealer I finished was the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. This is the first one, the Naturally Radiant concealer, not the super high coverage one that comes in a really thick control container. I also really liked this concealer and would consider purchasing it again. This was a Revlon Photo Ready uh, kind of color correcting pen. It was very much like the Touche Eclat like that, but it's in the shade Violet. I used it as a brightener underneath my concealer and while I liked the effect, it's uh, pretty much unnecessary, so I wouldn't buy that again. I also finished up three primers in 2019. The first was the Maybelline Master Prime Hydrating, Pr Hydrating Primer, which was absolutely fine, um, but not super necessary. And the NYX Angel Veil vale, uh, Skin Perfecting Primer. I'd heard excellent things about the Angel Veil, vale, having it compared to the Hourglass uh, Mineral Veil vale product. I, I liked it, um, but in 2019 I finished these primers pretty early on in the year and then I didn't buy another primer for the rest of 2019. I decided the plastic and the time wasn't worth me owning a primer and I did absolutely fine um, until I got this Tarte Quench Hydrating Primer as a mini sample from Sephora uh, and then I just used that up today actually. But now that I've used up all of my primers completely I won't be purchasing another primer. 
This is a Tarte Amazonian Clay Finishing Powder, the Smooth Operator. I used this. It took me absolutely ages, even though it's only a mini. And when I used this pr uh, powder up, I decided not to purchase another powder. So uh, I have recently decided to purchase one now that it's summertime, but I'm actually regretting purchasing another powder. And when I use up what I've got now, I won't buy another powder again. This was a little sample from Shiseido of three eyeshadows. Um, it contained 0.2 grams of eyeshadow so I used that up in a project I think it was the turn and burn project uh, and that was the only eyeshadow that I finished in 2019 but I'm really glad to get rid of that little plastic package down here I finished up four mascaras, two full size, two mini. The two minis were the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. I quite liked that mascara. And then it was the Stila Huge Extreme Lash Mascara Mini. I didn't like that one. The brush is actually enormous and uh, doesn't really, it's a bit too wet, a bit too fiddly. I also finished up the Max, Fa Max Factor Velvet Volume False Lash Effect Mascara. I didn't love this one. I felt like it didn't really actually add all that much volume or length, so I wouldn't consider purchasing that one again. I'm glad to have finished it. And the Maybelline Total Temptation Mascara, I think it was the first one I finished this year. Really, really standard, not remarkable. I don't think I would buy it again. Next, I finished up three bronzing products. I don't really contour, so even if it is a contour marketed product, I was using it for bronzing. So the first product I finished up was this Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. This is in the shade Fair Medium. I absolutely loved every single moment of this and I will repurchase it when I place an order from Charlotte Tilbury. The next one I finished, this is Tarte the Sculptor Contouring Face Slenderizer. Um, so what happened with this is I used it a bit and then it broke and fell onto the ground. So unfortunately I couldn't completely finish this product, but I didn't love the color and I didn't love the texture. So I was happy to call that one done when it was, when it decided to finish itself. And the last one I finished just recently was the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in the shade Light Bronzer. So this one I completely finished. I had pan on it at the beginning of 2019 and then I completely completely finished it this year. I really like the color of this. It's a nice light kind of yellow toned bronzer, but I hate the smell and I hate the packaging. The clasp broke really early on in me owning it um, and it's just enormous and bulky and smells horrible. So I wouldn't buy it again, but I'm interested in finding a bronzer that has a similar color. Up at the back I have three foundations that I finished in 2019. The first one has gone really moldy, which is one of the reasons that I actually hate it. This packaging is disgusting. Uh, you're supposed to twist it at the bottom and then the product comes out the sponge at the top and you use the sponge to apply it to your face. Super ineffective and really horrible packaging. So I squirted all of it out into a different container when I was using it, especially because there's a little plastic nub that goes into the hole and when you open it it flings foundation all over the place so terrible packaging then after that the fact that this is the lightest shade ivory and it's way too dark and way too orange so I didn't love using it but I did finish that I also finished up the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation. This was in the shade 201. Really, really liked this. Thought it wore really nicely. It's just a very standard foundation. I, I really enjoyed it. There was nothing to complain about, but it has been discontinued in Australia, so I can't purchase it again. The other one was the La roche Posay Uvida or Uvidea XL. Um, this is a BB cream in the shade number three, which is actually the lightest shade. Uh, I used this basically as a foundation even though it is a tinted moisturizer and I really really liked it. Uh, it's a really kind of more gray toned product uh, so it blends in really nicely. I would consider purchasing it again but not at this stage. 
I finished up two eyebrow products. The first is the Matte Clear Brow Gel, which is this one here, and this one is the Anastasia Brow Gel, just a little sample one. This is horrible. Um, it makes me feel like my brows are uh, cemented to my face. Would never buy that. The MAC one is absolutely fine. Finished up two eyeliners. The first was a mini pencil eyeliner. This is the NARS Larger Than Life Eyeliner in Via Veneto. I didn't like this, mostly because I don't like retractable eyeliners, and the packaging broke the second time that I used it. And this is the Sun and Park True Black Eye Pen Liner. I received this as a gift with purchase real a long time ago, um, but I really, really liked it. It bleeds slightly, but um, not too bad, and I think it lasted really well and was very easy to use. It's just a standard pen eyeliner. At the back, I finished up two highlighters. So the first was the Cover FX uh, Custom Enhancer Drops in the shade Celestial. Um, I really liked this product. It does make you look like your face is made out of metal. It's been discontinued, I think, worldwide, or perhaps just in Australia. But I used the vast majority of this mixing it into body lotion because I wanted a shimmery body lotion. I also did the same with the NARS Mini uh, Orgasm Illuminator. Um, I liked how this looked on the skin, but it was really patchy and um, kind of took off my foundation as I applied it. So I ended up using that in a lotion as well. And then I have two little nail polishes that I decided to include in this category. The first is the Marc Jacobs High Shine Nail Lacquer in the shade Gatsby. Absolutely love it. It's a complete metallic um, kind of taupey shade that leans purple on the nails. If I could repurchase this, I would, but I don't think they make it anymore. But I absolutely loved it, but I'm glad to finish it. Glad to get all the use out of it. And this was a mini from Mecca Cosmetica in the shade Tamandra. They no longer manufacture these nail polishes, so I couldn't buy it even if I wanted to, but I actually didn't like the color that much, so glad to get that rid of too. Then on the side here, I decided to throw in just some of the tools that I finished up as well. So as you can see, I've got four different beauty sponges. Two of them are from Ella Cosmetics. This one is a beauty blender, and this one is a Royal Techniques Miracle Complexion sponge. So they've all gone really moldy, which is pretty disgusting, but that's just kind of what happens with beauty sponges. My favorite is the Ella Cosmetics mostly because of the price and the texture um, and the shape. I also love the Beauty Blender, but it is far too expensive for what it is. I won't be purchasing the Miracle Complexion sponges anymore, mostly because I don't think the texture holds up over time. And then I had this little casualty this year. This is a Bedellium Tools um, bamboo brush, the 953. I actually really loved this stippling brush for applying blush, but as I was washing it, all the bristles came out, and so... It's done. So that is all the makeup that I used up in 2019. Not heaps, but also kind of a lot in some categories, like a lot of concealers, a lot of bronzers for some reason. I'm hoping next year to use up a lot more product. Um, but we'll see how we go. I know with other categories, like for example, the primer category and the foundation categories, I have less than I started 2019 with, so it's likely that I won't use up as much in 2020. But there you go. Let's move on now to perfume. Okay, this is my perfume category. So these are all of the perfumes, full-size mini and samples that I finished in 2019. I find this category very interesting personally because in the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, I decided to uh, investigate my interest in perfumes and become a perfume collector, which meant that in 2018 I accumulated a lot of samples. And in 2019, I wanted to try and finish as many of them as I possibly could, aiming to finish all of them. So while I didn't finish every single sample that I have, I still have, I think, about five or six left. I did finish the vast majority of them, um, and I'm really happy to have done that because it lets me know what I'm interested in and helps me kind of ex uh, explore perfume and what I'm interested in, in smelling like. So I'll go through what I finished. As you can see, I've got one full-size body spray here. This is Bath & Body Work. Bath and Body Works Oahu Coconut Sunset. It is a coconut scent, as you can imagine. I used that one pretty much exclusively as a bathroom spray or a room spray um, because I don't love the scent of coconut. So 
that's how I used up that one. This one is also from Bath & Body Works. It's a miniature of the white citrus scent. I purchased that while I was on holiday and um, before there was a Bath & Body Works in Australia outside of the airport. And uh, I was using that as a bedroom spray. So I, I spray on a body spray before I go to sleep most nights. And that's one that I used for that. I only finished up one full size perfume. This is Victor & Rolf's Flower Bomb EDP. It smells like rose patchouli. I'm sure most people have smelt it and it's one of my favorite scents but uh, I've been wearing that fragrance since I was in high school so for a number of years now and I'm kind of over it so I was really glad to finish up the full size and now I can move on with my life. I also finished some minis. So this was a clean scent in the scent Rain. Um, it was fine. It smells really salty, which is not my favorite, but I used up the mini rollerball. I also used up this mini from Frederick Mall. This is in Bigarad Concentre, uh, which I think is from their men's line pretty much. It was just a mini bottle dabber and it smells like spiced oranges. It was nice, but it's not my favorite and it didn't last at all on my my skin. The next one I had was a sprayer mini. This is from uh, Maison Francis Kirchian. This is Baccarat Rouge 540. It is one of my favorite scents and I will be purchasing a full size of that one. I absolutely love it. This was a travel spray of Kat Von D's Saint scent. The um, second release which I think was came out in 2017. It's a nice fresh white floral but I don't purchase from Kat Von D any longer so I won't repurchase that. Now onto my samples. I'll try and go through these pretty quickly because there's a lot of them and I can't really spend a lot of time explaining the notes and such. First one over here, this is by Rodo's 11th Hour. This was a sample that I had made at a Mecca store. Um, it smells like pineapple in the opening and then becomes quite spicy. I then have this Floral Street set. I used up nearly the entire set except for one, which I still have. Um, I think it's Black Orchid or maybe I finished that. I can't quite remember. Wild Vanilla Orchid, Iris Goddess, London Poppy, Shipra Sublime, Ylang Ylang Espresso, Wonderland Peony, and Neon Rose. They're all really nice scents. They're all floral heavy, obviously, Floral Street, and they are really fruity most of the time. Um, the one that I think is the most unique is Ylang Ylang Espresso. It smells like coffee and Ylang Ylang, um, and really chocolatey and rich. So that was probably my favorite of the bunch, but it is quite unusual, so I would give it a, tr a try before you purchased it. This is Taka Julieta. I literally can't remember anything about it. I just used it up, and that's that. I got three from Ellis Brooklyn, so I bought a set um, last year, 2019. Sorry, 2018, and I used up three of them. Sci-Fi is a really nice lemon floral rose. I really like it. It doesn't last on my skin, though. This is Fawn, which is basically a coconut scent, which is nice, but not my thing. And Fable was pretty unremarkable to me as well. These three are the same. These are Woman by Ralph Lauren. That's a really nice fruity floral designer. I would recommend it. I think it's a nice not nice enough scent. The vanilla lasts, but none of the rest of the notes do. This is Kate Spade's Walk on Air. I don't really like any of Kate Spade's fragrances. They're just very sharply floral. Not my favorite. This one was from Juliet Has a Gun. This is Gentlewoman. Really, really nice scent, but um, Juliet Has a Gun doesn't last on my skin at all, so I wouldn't pay it niche prices for them. Then these ones here all along the bottom, um, these are dabber samples that I got from Lucky Scent. That's a great website if you're interested in sampling niche perfumes. They send them out in these little dabbers. So I'll run through them really quickly. The way I've divided them is these are perfumes that I would not purchase. These ones are perfumes that I would be interested in purchasing. First we have Eccentric Molecule Molecule O2. Um, basically to me it just smells like alcohol. Juliet has a gun, Moscow Mule, nice enough but doesn't last. This is by Killian, Moonlight in Heaven. Um, kind of just smelled unremarkable to me. I was kind of surprised how much I didn't like that one. This is Ex Nihilo Fleur Narcotique. Really nice, but um, nothing special to me, just a nice fruity floral. This is Zoologist Nightingale, far too strong, not a fan. Um, by Killian, Good Girl Gone Bad is a really popular scent, but to me it has a very, very strong cigarette scent to it that I just can't really get over. 
This is Kiko Meshiri Lacoum. Really nice scent, but smells almost exclusively like baby powder, so not something I'd wear every day. This is Zoologist Dragonfly. Again, I think Dragonfly is... Uh, it's, I don't like Zoologist scents. I know that's unusual, but I think they're far too strong um, and not pleasant to wear. This is Zoologist Hummingbird, probably the worst of the bunch. It smells very strongly of pollen. This is Mognette Perry uh, Eau de Parfum. Nice enough, again, not remarkable to me, so I wouldn't purchase it. And this is from Parfums Nikolai. This is Fig Tea. Really like fig perfumes. This smells like the fruit, not like the leaf. The issue is that it has a very dense powdery note underneath, so there are other fig tea scents that I prefer to that one. This is Kiko Meshiri Peau de Peche, a really beautiful peach scent that I want to purchase. This is from Ebba. This is Miss Marissa Perfume Oil. It smells like tropical fruit to the extreme, really beautiful wood purchase. This one is from Byredo, it's Balda Freak. It's a very nice, warm, uh, gourmand, spicy kind of scent that I really, really enjoyed a wood purchase. Diaz and Durga de Baser. Um, this is a fig leaf scent and I think it is really nice. I would consider purchasing it if not for the fact that it is incredibly expensive and there are alternatives. So while I really liked it, if it came in a small size, I'd prefer that. This is Serge Luten's La Verge de Fer, uh, however you pronounce that in French. It smells like pear to me and it's really beautiful. I would buy that. And this is Indult Tijota. It smells exactly like really potent caramel. I would buy that. And this is Luban's Black Jade, which is a spicy cardamom rose scent. Love that as well. Would purchase that. So while it might look a little bit small and dwindly, I think this is probably going to be my biggest finished up haul for all of, you know, the next couple of years, considering that now I've used up all of my samples, I'll be working on full-sized bottles, and uh, they take a lot, lot longer, especially considering this was well over halfway done at the beginning of 2019, and it is the only full-sized I finished. On to the next category, skincare and body care. Okay, so this is all of the skincare and body care that I finished in 2019. Um, it's a little bit messy and spread out, so what I'm going to do is zoom in on each category um, and try and walk you through exactly what I have finished. So in my body category, I just had one natural deodorant that I decided to put aside. This is from Akin, and it's their um, geranium and cedarwood deodorant. I just wanted to include that because it's probably one of the best natural deodorants I've ever used, so I wanted to mention it. I also finished up two uh, bars of soap that came in packaging. All the other bars of soap that I have used since finishing these um, haven't come in packaging, so I can't show that to you. This is the Natio Wellness Exfoliating Body Bar. Really liked this, would like it even more if this was the only packaging it comes in because this is cardboard, but underneath it is encased in plastic, unfortunately. I also finished up this Lush um, soap. This was the Satsuma soap. I liked it, but I don't think I'll purchase Lush soaps anymore because they have so much dye in them and I don't love that. Onto body wash, I finished up these two samples of Beauty Farm Refreshing Shower Gel. Um, I think I included these because they were in my turn and burn project, but otherwise I didn't include any samples in this video. I also finished up the Body Shop Panita Colada Shower Gel. Smells like pineapple and coconut, really nice. And a Marlin and Getz um, Rum Body Wash. Actually a very nice scent, really unisex. And this is a Libra Get Fresh body wash that I just received for free and decided to finish. Those are all of the body washes that I owned and since finishing them I will no longer be purchasing any sort of shower gel that comes in a plastic package um, because it's just just as easy to use up a bar of soap which has absolutely no packaging attached to it. I also finished up these two body lotions. This was the Aveeno Skin Relief Moisturizing Lotion. I liked it. It's fair. It's, an, it's fine, really, but not my favorite. And the Marlin and Getz Vitamin B5 Body Moisturizer. Very thin, um, but nice scent. But I probably wouldn't purchase it either because, again, I'm straying away from trying to buy products that aren't in packaging um, or aren't in plastic packaging. So I'm looking at purchasing more things from like Lush where they'll recycle the packaging for me. 
This was a um, Mecca 365 day hand wash. This is in the scent Bergamot Orange and Gardenia. I don't think they make this anymore. Um, I got it as a birthday gift a few years ago and I finally finished it. It was 400 mils of hand wash, so that took a long time. But as I'm sure you can imagine, I now only use uh, bars of soap. Finish up two hand creams. This one was from a brand called Haven. Ylang Ylang Rose Hand Therapy. It was nice enough, mostly just smelt good. And this was a Lemony Flutter Cuticle Butter from uh, Lush. Far, 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 far too greasy. I would never buy that again, but I will be recycling that packaging. Okay, starting in the back of my skincare section, I wanted to talk about the uh, just second cleansers that I finished up. So I've got the Murad Essential C Cleanser, a nice gel cleanser, but it retails for far too much. I would never buy that. I got it in a Christmas set, uh, 2017. 2018, I think. Maybe 2017, not sure. This was the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. I was shocked to find out that that smells like cucumber. I don't know why, I just thought it would be something else. And it's not um, a cream cleanser. Again, I thought it would be a cream cleanser. It's a gel cleanser. It was fine, I wouldn't buy that again though. This is the Dr. Lewin's Foaming Cleanser. Um, they've repackaged it since now, since this, and um, I didn't like it at all. It made my skin feel like plastic. This was the Osea, or Oskia, sorry, Renaissance Cleansing Gel. Very nice product, far too expensive, um, wouldn't buy it again, but really very nice to use. And the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser, probably my favourite out of all of them, but again, pretty expensive, and to get to Australia, it's incredibly difficult, so I probably wouldn't buy that again. But again, like the Oskia, really enjoyed the texture. Right next to it, I have the um, makeup remover. So these are my first cleanse products. First in the front, I have a Dare to Wear makeup remover pads packet. I used that up this year, but that's not exciting. I also used two makeup remover liquids. So the first was the NARS Gentle Oil Free Makeup Remover. That was just a mini, and it was absolutely fine. And this was the Mecca Cosmetica um, Meta Mecca Morphosis Eye Makeup Remover or Micellar Water. That wasn't very good at all, so I wouldn't buy that. I also just don't really like micellar waters. So I've got the Shiromura Skin Purifier. This was the ultimate uh, Sublime Beauty Cleansing Oil. It left far too much of a film on my eyes. I do like that it removes all my makeup, but I didn't like the film. So I wouldn't buy it again, but it does remove all your makeup. This was the Tatcha Pure One Step Camellia Cleansing Oil. I really liked this as well, but again, it did leave a film on my eyes that I didn't love, so I wouldn't buy that again because of the price. This was the Vanilla Co Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm in the Revitalizing. I really liked this. It removes makeup really well. Um, it stings if you don't wash it out of your eyes properly, but if you do, it's not a problem, so I would buy that again. And this was the Kate Somerville Cold Cream uh, Cleansing Moisturizing Cleanser and Makeup makeup remover. I really liked this a lot, but it's pretty expensive. I might buy that again, uh, just because I really liked the process of using it, and it is moisturizing. Moving on to the moisturizer category, these are just my everyday, day and nighttime standard moisturizers. We'll start with the large sizes. This was the Glow Lab Facial Moisturizer, super standard, really nice, my favorite that I used all year easily. This was the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. This is beautiful. It leaves such a beautiful dewy finish on the skin. The only problem is if I'm wearing it during the day, I'm going to put a sunscreen over the top so you don't get to see what it does for your skin. And if I'm wearing it at night, I'm going straight to sleep. So it doesn't make sense for me to buy this again, even though it is beautiful to use. It's also very expensive. This was the Andalou Naturals Renewal Cream. Um, this is from their Brightening range. It's got probiotics and vitamin C. It is almost identical to the Origins Ginseng Vitamin Moisturizer. Um, I don't really see any difference and I didn't love this, so wouldn't buy that again. This is the Body Shop Vitamin E Moisture Cream. Not a huge fan of this just because it got really gritty near the end and I couldn't understand what that was about, so wouldn't buy that again. 
This was the Bosha Cactus Water Hydrating Cream. It is not a cream, it is a gel, and I don't think it was moisturizing enough, and I didn't like that it left my skin feeling sticky. So wouldn't buy that either. On to the minis. This is the Antipodes Vanilla Pod Hydrating Day Cream. This was a miniature. This feels kind of like putting zinc cream all over your face. It's really thick and it takes ages to sink in. Would not purchase that. Here we had the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. Uh, I liked this but it's very expensive and not necessary for me. This was the La Roche-Posay Tolerain Sensitive. Um, it's nice, but it's really, really light, so I probably wouldn't buy that. This was the Amore Pacific Time Response Skin Reserve Cream. This retails for something like $600, so I would never, ever buy that, but I think this packaging is really adorable. These are all the same. It's the Lancome Absolute Soft Cream, which is a sanded moisturizer. It smells very, very strongly of rose, and I don't think it did anything spectacular, so I would not pay Lancome prices for it. But I was happy to have so many minis to use up. And then these are all from La Mer, so I think I have... So these are both the standard cream. This one is the moisturizing cream, and this is the gel cream. All of those retail for over $200, I think, for a full size, and as far as I can tell, they're just kind of like a thick, cold cream. They're super standard. Um, they were nice to use, and they added great to my empties total, but I would never purchase those full size. So just in summary of all of those moisturizers I used this year, the only two that I would buy again are the Glow Lab and the Tatcha, but as I explained, there's no reason for me to buy the Tatcha again, so the Glow Lab is the only one I would buy again, and it's one of the cheapest ones there. This category also really surprised me for the amount of minis that I used up. Um, I didn't pay for any of those. They were all gift with purchase or just free samples from whatever store I was buying from otherwise. And the amount of plastic that I went through in this category really, really bothers me. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're taking samples. You're, you're taking, like, plastic, basically. And it's just something that I w became aware of this year for sure. So here I have three eye creams that I used up this year. This was a sample from Verso, the Super Eye Serum with Retinol 8. Um, I really liked that, but I don't think I need Retinol at this point in my life, so I wouldn't buy that. This was the Skin Physics Oxygen C Immediate Eye Lift Serum. Really, really thin, uh, kind of yeah, much more serum-y than creamy, and I didn't really like it at all. Didn't think it did anything, so I would not buy that again. And then underneath this, this is the Laneige Water Bank Eye Gel. Um, this is really, it is a gel cream, so it feels really nice and cooling, but I don't really think it did all that much. I'm still, I, I go on and off about eye creams. I don't think I'm completely convinced that I need to use them. Um, based on the three that I used up this year, I don't think I need them. So unfortunately, I wouldn't buy any of those. I only finished up one oil this year. This is the Fresh Sea Berry Moisturizing Face Oil. And it's really lovely. I absolutely love mixing it in with a moisturizer at the end of the day. Um, it's a really nice balancing, harmonizing kind of oil. It makes my skin feel moisturized without getting greasy, and I really, really like it a lot, actually. And it took me pretty much an entire year or more to use up because I do use it almost every day. That being said, I'm interested in exploring cruelty-free beauty in 2020, and Fresh is not a cruelty-free brand, so at this point I would not repurchase, but I love it. In the back here, I have two toner products that I finished up, actually three. So the first is just down here on the bottom. This is the Tarte Knockout Tingling Treatment, which I received as a free gift with purchase from Sephora. This is a really strong AHA and BHA um, skin peel kind of product. I don't really love this kind of product. It's like a liquid that you brush onto your skin with a cotton swab, and it, um, it does really, really tingle. It's very strong, but I don't love how it works and I don't see much effect on my skin so I wouldn't buy that but I was kind of impressed by how clinical it actually was for a Tarte product that is. This is the Avene Thermal Spring Water. This is the um, spring water that comes in a can 
it's a lovely experience to spray it on your skin um, straight out of the shower when you're hot and this is nice and cooling. I wouldn't buy it again because I just need to be honest with myself. It is water in an aerosol can. And this was the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Facial Toner. I purchased this because I wanted to be like all the cool skincare bloggers. And it was nice, but I wouldn't buy it again. I don't really think moisturizing toners actually do anything. Just in the back really quickly, I'll talk about these two outliers. This was the Asano Rose Hip Gentle Facial Exfoliator. It's a cream exfoliator with lots of little bitty beads in it. Not enough beads to cream ratio, wouldn't buy it, wasn't a big fan. I think I received that as a gift with purchase. And this was my Clearasil Ultra Acne Treatment Extra Strength. It's just a salicylic acid cream. I wouldn't ever buy one of these again. I don't think they're that effective. I've got three sunscreens I finished this year. This is from Thank You Farmer. It is the Sun Protect Shimmer Sun Essence SPF 30. Uh, it has a bit of a shimmer in it, which is what makes it brightening. I wouldn't buy this again because um, while these products, these Korean and Japanese products are imported into Australia, they don't necessarily meet our sunscreen requirements. Um, so while it says 30 SPF, it isn't necessarily actually 30 SPF underneath the hole in our ozone layer and our horrible sun. So then I purchased the Neutrogena Sheer Zinc Face Dry Touch. This is so awful if you're trying to put makeup on top of it. If you're just trying to wear it, it's absolutely fine and looks actually fine. It's just sheer zinc. But um, if you're trying to put makeup on it, it pills like nobody's business. It's absolutely horrible. I hated using it because I wear makeup every day. So that meant that I purchased the Ultraviolet Clean Screen Mattifying Mineral Sunscreen. This is Broad Spectrum and SPF 30. It also is a mineral sunscreen made by a Australian brand, so I know that it meets our requirements. I loved this. I thought it was really, really lovely. I wish they would make a stronger SPF in their mineral sunscreen range. I'm currently working through a sunscreen sample and when I do finish that I will be purchasing another sunscreen from Ultraviolet. Here we have the serums that I used up this year. So we've got a sample of the Drunk Elephant A Passione Retinol Cream. Didn't notice anything, would not purchase. This is the Drunk Elephant uh, B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum. I don't think that's hydrating enough so I would not buy that either. I finished up the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Serum. Actually, not a bad standard drugstore serum. It does contain silicones if you want to avoid that, but it was fine, honestly. But if you're looking for a drugstore hydrating primer, I would actually recommend the Derma E Hydrating Serum. It's got hyaluronic acid in it, and I thought it was a really nice um, moisturizing, creamy serum. I really liked that and would buy that again. This was the Derma E Vitamin C Concentrated Serum. This also has hyaluronic acid, but is supposed to be a brightening, hydrating, or sorry, brightening vitamin C serum. The packaging is entirely clear, so it means that they have to use a um, lower grade vitamin C, so it can't really be as brightening as other products that are available in opaque packaging. So I wouldn't buy that one again, um, especially it was just really thin and I didn't love it but I would buy the hydrating again. This one from Glow Lab, uh, I purchased, it's just their facial serum. I thought it was thin and it doesn't really claim to do anything remarkable, so it doesn't really target anything, doesn't have great actives, wouldn't buy that one again. And this was the Dr. Robux True Blue Ultimate Hydrating Serum. So this was the most expensive serum I think I purchased this year and I wouldn't buy it again. I didn't think it was that remarkable. I didn't feel particularly moisturized when I was using it. I've not purchased a replacement since I finished it and I haven't noticed a difference difference. So, not my favorite. And here are the masks that I finished in 2019. So I've got sheet masks. I've got three of the J. June Cosmetics Rose Blossom Sheet Mask. This is my favorite moisturizing sheet mask. I really liked it. I finished up the last that I had of those. This was a Mecca Cosmetica Hydrogel Lip Mask. Would never buy that because I think they're ridiculous. This is the Lululemon Homeo Age. Um, sheet mask as well as the Lululemon Sweet Drop. One's honey and one is seaweed. I also really like this range of sheet masks as well and I used up the last two I had of those. This is the Garnier Skin Active Honey Mask. Um, 
It was interesting, but it also contains palm oil, which I found really retro and really odd, so I would not use that again. And this was the Mecca Cosmetica Hydrogel Eye Masks. Again, I don't find those particularly useful. I don't think they do anything. So while I loved the Lulu Loon and the J. June Cosmetics masks, I have completely vowed off sheet masks pretty much for the rest of my life um, because I think they're wasteful. I, I, I can't justify using them any longer. They are single-use products are too wasteful, so I won't be using those again. As for not single-use masks, I used up a few as well. First, I have the Andalou Naturals 1000 Roses Rose Water Mask. This was just a standard moisturizing mask. I wouldn't buy that again. This was the Laneige Water Sleeping Mask. This was pretty nice, actually. Um, I don't think I would buy it. I'm not really sure if I like moisturizing sleeping masks, but that was a nice one. I also had the um, Glow Recipe Watermelon Sleeping Mask. I preferred the Laneige to this one, um, just because I think this is more of a jelly kind of consistency, not as moisturizing. I then had the Shantakai Bio Lifting Mask. I really, really liked this as a moisturizing wash-off mask. I would consider purchasing that, but I'm not even sure if they still make it. After that, I had the Sukin Detoxifying Clay Mask. This is from their Super Greens range. I don't think this clay mask or really any of Sukin's clay masks do anything. They don't dry. They just kind of, kind of sit on the skin um, and don't do a whole lot, so I wouldn't buy that again. This was the the Glossier Moisturizing Moon Mask. Now I've talked about this before, I really didn't like this product because it felt as though when I washed it off my skin was really sensitive, as though it had done something to irritate it and my skin was reacting, trying to plump itself up and make itself um, I don't know, like safe and healthy again. It just felt as though my skin was really sensitive every time I used this, so I would not buy that again, didn't enjoy using it. This was the Nivea Daily Essentials One Minute Urban Detox Mask, a pore refining mask. I believe, yeah, it was a self-heating formula, which is a total gimmick and doesn't really do anything, so I wouldn't buy that. I don't think it did literally anything. This was the Pixie Rose Flash Balm. Um, this you can use as a moisturizing wash-off mask or as a primer. I only used it as a wash-off mask and it was nice enough but not my favorite, so I wouldn't buy that again. And this was the Pixie Glow O2 Oxygen Mask. This was one of those foaming bubbling masks. It's fun to use and it's a cute little pick-me-up, but I don't think the results are lasting enough to buy that again. So just touching on the masks, um, I've kind of come to the revelation this year that I don't think at-home masks really do a whole lot, and I don't think I'm going to invest in them in the same way that I used to. Um, I am interested in writing some posts about very similar to Hannah Louise Poston's how my no by year changed my skincare routine or how it changed my relationship with makeup, that kind of thing. Um, and I'd be interested in talking about specifically how it impacted how I think about things like masks and skincare routines. So if you'd be interested in hearing about that, please let me know if you would read a post if I made it or if you'd rather a video or whatever that would be. Just let me know if that sounds up your alley. Here we are at the last and the smallest category of all the products that I finished this year. So these are the hair care products that I finished. I am a little bit surprised by how small this category is. I have very, very thick, very, very curly hair, and while I don't style it every single day, it kind of seems like I hardly do anything with it based on what I've got here. I know for sure I definitely don't shampoo it every single day, um, and I've probably got more conditioner than I could probably throw a stick at. But um, oh yeah, I'm just a little bit surprised by how small this is. So I'll just go through what I've got so far. This is the L'Oreal Botanicals uh, Safflower Rich Infusion Shampoo for dry hair. This has no silicones, parabens, or colorants, but it does have sulfates. I purchased it because every once in a while I get really left out about not being able to buy hair care products at the drugstore or at the supermarket, and I just wanted to try something that everybody else uses. So I bought that, and it took ages. It was very, very big, but I finished it, and I wouldn't buy it again because really I shouldn't be using sulfates on my hair. The only um, washed out conditioner that I finished was the Jessie Curl Deep Conditioning 
treatment. This is in the citrus lavender scent. It's a really nice leave-in conditioner, but that being said, the conditioner I'm currently using, which is on its very last leg, so it'll probably be my first empty of 2020, uh, I think that's conditioning enough, and I don't think I need the extra step of adding a deep conditioner treatment. But that being said, I might get it again in winter when my hair dries out again. I finished up two uh, leave-in conditioners, so these I put in after I've uh, dried my hair or it's still damp, but before I style it. So this is from Embrace. Um, this was the leave-in conditioner. This was nice enough. I actually put this in my hair um, while it was still very, very wet, so I put it in, in the shower, and it was nice enough. I don't think I would buy it again. It, it didn't wow me. This is Living Proof's Curl Leave-In Conditioner. I love the Living Proof Curl range, but it's not available in Australia for whatever reason. The Living Proof is, but not the Curl range. I liked this one as well. It's not my favourite product from the range, and it's not my favourite leave-in conditioner, but, you know, I'd actually probably buy it again. I did enjoy using that one. And then I have two styling gels. So typically I'll use a styling gel rather than a styling cream on my curls. And these are the two I use this year. Jessie Curl Spiralicious Styling Gel is a standard for me. I already have another bottle um, ready and waiting uh, when I use up what I'm using now. This is really sleek and it does get a little bit crunchy but you have to scrunch it out at the end. But it is a standard. I pretty much always have a bottle of this in my cupboard. And this is one that I tried just this year. This is Mixed Chicks Styling Gel. It has a little bit more of a light hold, but it's no less crunchy than the Jessie Curl. So it wasn't my favorite, and I'm currently using a styling gel that I prefer much more to this. Um, so I wouldn't buy this one again, but I would buy the Jessie Curl again, um, as I already have. So those are all the hair care products I used this year. I'm planning on using more next year, hopefully, um, but you know, it is what it is. You use what you can. So there you go. This is one more final shot of everything I used up in 2019. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. Um, I have been blogging a little bit of the experience of going on a no-buy, so I will link uh, my blog down below if you're interested in having a read. But otherwise, I have thoroughly enjoyed this process. Um, I find it really, really interesting to know how much I have used and especially how much it is worth in a year. Um, clearing out the amount of things I've accumulated has been immensely satisfying and it has been uh, equally disturbing to see how much plastic I have accumulated and then used and essentially will just be going into landfill. The vast majority of this can't be recycled. If it can, uh, it's still very unlikely to be used again. So that's been a little bit of an eye-opener for me this year. I am planning on doing it again in 2020. I'm particularly interested in seeing an expansion in my makeup used up category. I know this year was dedicated a lot to using up skincare and miscellaneous products that I'd accumulated, um, but I think next year I will definitely have more makeup to show you. So there you go anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you did a video like this. They are so satisfying to watch and I would love to come and watch yours. And please let me know if you did a no buy or a low buy this year or if you're planning on doing one next year and what are the results. I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.